three, Andy Smith of Airdrie with three, Tommy Steele, Stenhouse Samuel with three, and Pierre van Hoydonk of Celtic with three as well. Back up to Tyne Castle in the build-up to the big game, John Robertson with Davy Proven. John, the big news that we're getting from the Rangers dressing room is that there will be no Mark Catley in the Rangers side and no Basil Bolly. How much of a boost is that to you? The Mark Catley one's obviously a tremendous boost for the, the club here. I mean, he's been a killer for us the last few games. He's scored unbelievable goals, but uh, I don't really matter who the Rangers put out tonight. They'll have a very strong team and they'll be hard to beat. Tommy McLean has been saying all week that you're going to approach this match positively. Can we expect you to have a go tonight? We have to be. At Tyne Castle this season we've played really, really well. Away from home we've been patchy, so it's our tie. It's a big match for us. Uh, this is a place to get Rangers if you're ever going to beat them, and hopefully it's going to be tonight. Is there a bit of needle in this match because Rangers have knocked you out of this competition in the last two years? No, I don't think there's any needle. They're always hard, tough, uncompromising games, and I'm sure, I'm sure the viewers will see a wee bit more of that tonight. But uh, no, I mean, we've been unfortunate. We've drawn Rangers the last two years. We've got them here tonight. Uh, we're out of Glasgow, so hopefully we can spring a result. Thanks, John. No problem. That's John Robertson with Davy Proven. When we return, we'll confirm the team news for you from Tyne Castle. Hearts against Rangers. Team news and tactics for tonight in just a moment. Rangers, let's hear from the Rangers boss, Walter Smith, with Davy Proven. Walter, you've had problems all this week through illness and injury. What is the latest team news? Well, we've lost uh, Mark Hadley and Basil Bolly for tonight's game. You know, I like for the fight, we've got three or four out already. So, uh, you know, we've got quite a few players missing for this evening's game. So does that mean you're going to have to approach this more cautiously? No, I don't think so. I don't think we can approach it cautiously. We've got to go and try and win the game. Uh, league games, you may think about that, but I think in a cup tie, that would uh, be unwise to, to take that approach. Ironically, you've had eight days to prepare for this match. Yes, we went away um, to France in the early part of last week and we felt that would be a benefit to everybody and when we came back there was a flu bug at the place and um, we lost quite a few of our players, reserves included, um, in the latter stages of last week. So that's been a disappointment for us. Thanks, Walter. Yeah, thanks, David. Walter Smith with David Proven there. Back to Tyne Castle in just a moment or two. Uh, these clubs have met 26 times in the Scottish Cup and Rangers have dominated proceedings, winning 17 to Hearts 4 with five draws. At Tyne Castle, they've met seven times. Rangers have won the majority of them. If you fancy a flutter tonight, Hearts 9 to 4 outsider, Rangers 6 to 5 favourites, and the draw 15 to 8. And no doubt there's been plenty of betting interest, but let me tell you about one man, a customer from Paisley, according to one of our bookmakers, tells us uh, that the man from Paisley stands to win £22,809 if tonight's game finishes at 2-2, having placed a 50 pence correct score lucky 15 bet over the weekend. It's a series of bets. He's already correctly predicted Newcastle United to beat Manchester City in the FA Cup 3-1. The odds on that were 10 to 1. Manchester United to beat Leeds 3-1. The odds were 10 to 1. And Sheffield United to beat South End 3-1. The odds on that were 18 to 1. So all the money rests now on a 2-2 draw tonight. The odds on that are 14 to 1. So you'll feel for him, won't you, if it's 2-2 with five minutes left. Annie McCoyst and Sandy Clark, the man beat you to it. That's unbelievable, isn't it? I'm trying to look if he's a relative of yours, Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just know, I can't make my mind up. Why has he changed the two each? I mean, he went, the three ones were, were lucky for him. You know yes, they mean? were, you're quite right. Yeah. But good luck to him. I mean, that's, a, that's an incredible bit. I think he'll be watching with his fingers crossed. I'm maybe not watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the scene at Tyne Castle tonight. Sandy, this is a ground you know so very well. Let's have a little look around here. The current capacity, just over 13,000. The Wheatfield stand, which holds nearly 6,000 people, redeveloped at a cost of two and a half million pounds. Um, they're doing a good job on Tyne Castle, aren't they? Yeah, so? it's very impressive. You look there, it's a, it's a marvellous stand and I believe they're ready to start work on the, uh, the school end at Tyne Castle. Uh, once it's complete, it'll be a marvellous, marvellous stadium with a, with a great atmosphere. Well, here is the uh, school end, uh, which is in the process of renovation. Yep. Work starts in April on the family stand and again, excellent that in yeah. Scottish football, such emphasis has been placed on the family well, that's right. Football. I think that's that's so important now that you know we've got to attract as many customers as we can, and it's not just men. Now, it's obviously the the ladies and the, the children as well. I'm just looking at that picture there. I managed to put one or two balls in that school a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Approximate cost of nearly two million pounds involved there, but it'll be ready for the start of next season. The Gorgie Road end, the other end where the visiting fans are located tonight. Uh, and this is to be rebuilt as well. Yeah, that's that's always been a bit of a, a bugbear at, at Tyne Castle. It's so open that if there's any rain at all, the, the poor supporters get uh, get drowned. Uh, and that's something they've got to address as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're looking at that. 
and the main stand will be the last part of the jigsaw to complete a new 19 and a half thousand all-seater Tyne Castle. Has it been a good ground for you, Ali? As a player? Uh, yeah, it has. I must admit, over the, I don't want to fit here, but over the years, Tyne Castle has been generally a good ground for us to go to. Um, been lucky enough to score one or two goals there and uh, generally we've played, played reasonably well and won a vast majority of the games. It's been an excellent ground for Mark Hately, but you don't have him tonight. That's a blow. I mean, that's a real blow. Um, Hately himself, Big Mark's been outstanding against the, the, the Tyne Castle boys in recent years, and that's a blow for us. But um, these things happen in football, and we'll just have to compensate for it, but it's a, it's a serious thing to happen to us at this stage. Mm -hmm. Sandy? Yeah, it's a, it's a tremendous blow to Rangers. I'm sure the, the Hearts lads, none of them as well as I do, they all will get, they'll get a hell of a lift from the fact that Mark isn't playing, because you know, last year we played them five times, I think he scored seven goals against us, so he certainly won't score tonight, which is a big uh, you know, it's credit in Hearts' favour there. What about Bowley? It's also a blow, but at the same time, we can compensate for that because we've got other players that can come in. We've got McLaren and Goff and Brown, and I think we're pretty well covered in that department. It is a blow, but at the same time, we're well covered in that department. But the, the, the hate of things is a real blow for us. Right, well, you're starting well in your cup trial this season, weren't you, Ali? Uh, against, well, Rangers in a moment or two, but first, Hearts progress to this phase. And, Sonny, it wasn't entirely a smooth pass par path past uh, Clyde Bank, was yeah. it? Yeah, it was a difficult game. I think uh, doing it Kilbowie, it's a it's a tight stadium and you know the, the crowd are close on you there and it's a very heavy pitch. Great start there, John Robertson is very, very good at penalties and you know we've got pressure situation, John sticks away really well. But Clyde Bank come back into it. Mm -hmm. A break down Clyde Bank right there and I think it's across to the back post if I remember right. It's a great header from Kennedy. Yeah. Stephen Thrill might not be too happy with that one, but it's a it's a magnificent header. How disappointed were Hearts not to get through it the first time of asking? Well, I think if you're being honest about it, if you're away from home to the smaller club in the first round, you're quite happy to get them back to your own patch. Uh, and I think, I believe on the night it wasn't there, but I believe Clyde Bank were a wee bit unfortunate late in the game that uh, Hearts certainly finished the job at home. It's a great header. It is. Right, so on to the uh, replay then. Back at Tyne Castle, and you did the job this time round. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a great finish, typical John Robertson, but the lad who crossed it, Kevin Thomas, he's, he's only 19, 20, Kevin, very talented player. Uh, he makes goals and he scores goals, and uh, I think we're maybe the second one's coming up now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's John Miller in the box, John Robertson, he's, he's, John's got great vision and awareness, and he sees Kevin making the run, it's a magnificent run, great touch, good quick feet, and it's a, it's a brilliant finish. How good a player can that young man be Kevin well, Thomas. if he keeps his feet in the ground he's a, he's a lad he's got a, uh, he's got a great spark about himself he's got to channel his effort the right way and if he continues to do that he's uh, really the world's his oyster he's a very very talented player but occasionally let's say just needs a wee kick up the backside you weren't too impressed with the defending there presumably well I think that's the last minute so it didn't really matter but it's slack and uh, I'm sure Tom McLean wasn't too happy with that one right that's hearts into round four in this big cup tie tonight now Ali McCoy's for you Rangers uh, against Hamilton uh, this game? Yes, that's, it was a tough one for us, Paul, because, I mean, as we said earlier on, Adrian Sprock, I mentioned, he scored the, the winner for Hamilton against mm -hmm. Rangers in 1987 at Ibrox, but uh, the boys went, went about the job the right way, and he was see Stuart McCall winning the ball. Stuart had a great game that night, if I remember, and uh, the, the pitch wasn't, as you can see, wasn't in great condition, but we Trevor as well here for the goal. Nice chip, and off the post. I'm still not sure if he tried that, if it's across to the back post or a shot, but it certainly ended up in the right place for him. He does seem to have the ability to do oh, remarkable things though, Stephen. Trevor's is, is another one, we're talking about quick feet there, Trevor's got very, very quick feet. And uh, I wouldn't bank on him, I think he tried that. Mm. Uh, I would say Trevor's well capable of that. This is a good goal as well, Craig Moore, one of the younger boys that came into the side this year. Good through ball there, a, a nice dummy from Martin and Big Basil. Side foot shot away like a striker there. And then don't know where he's off to there, but he takes a great touch here actually. His left foot into his path, and it's a nice finish. Is he often dangerous in the opposition box? He's not. He hasn't been the, make, making too many shots and runs this season, but um, he obviously felt he could go for it there. And this is loaded up away for the third goal. Takes his time, just rounds the goalkeeper, and knocks it in. He's been absolutely outstanding this year. He's one of the best players in the Scottish football scene in years and years, Paul. So much composure and ability. He, he just looks an absolute certainty on one on ones uh, or when he gets a run on a defender. Of the box. He is absolutely terrifying. Here's the goal that never was. <laughs> Thanks, Arsenal. <laughs> and David Lorimer pulling one back near the end. This game played at Fair Hill, incidentally. Mm. Very talented player, young David. He's got incredible ability, and I'm sure as he develops physically, he'll be a very good player for Hamilton. He takes that very well, and to be fair to him, I think he had another chance yep. immediately after that, but he sticks this in a way very well. He came on in that game, second half, and played exceptionally well for a young kid. Did very well. But Rangers 
safely into round four and the big one tonight, Hearts against Rangers. Let's get the team news now from Tyne Castle with Davy Proven. Good evening, David. Good evening. Well, let's just give you the home team news here first. And as Tommy McLean told us earlier on, the good news is that two out of three of his injury doubts make the kickoff tonight. Both Colin Miller and Dave McPherson in the Hearts side. The full Hearts team tonight, Craig Nelson, Steve Frail, Colin Miller, Craig Levine, Jim Bett, Dave McPherson, Brian Hamilton, Gary Mackay, John Robertson, John Miller and David Hagen. John Calhoun, 12, Kevin Thomas, 14 and the reserve goalkeeper is Henry Smith. The news for Rangers not quite so good because no Basil Bolly and more significantly no Mark Hately in the Rangers side. Although he does welcome back Trevor Stephen and Alan McLaren after suspension. The full Rangers side, Ali Maxwell, Craig Moore, David Robertson, Richard Goff, Alan McLaren, Alex Cleland, Trevor Stephen, Stuart McCall, Charlie Miller, Gordon Jury and Brian Loudrop. John Brown wears 12, Ian Durant 14 and the, and the reserve goalkeeper Billy Thompson. Thanks very much to Davey Proven. Back to Tyne Castle in just a moment or two. Thoughts on team announcements there? Sandy? Yeah, I'm just looking at the Hearts team there. I can't work out exactly how they'll play. There's, there's only two central defenders. Hearts normally play three at the back. So at least if uh, Tom is going to go a back four tonight, uh, Hately been out for uh, for Rangers. It's uh, been interesting to see how he works out. I'm surprised Jim Kevin Thomas isn't playing. Yeah, any, any thoughts about that? Well, I would have played him. That's all I would say on it. Uh, but obviously, that's nothing to do with me now. But Hagen and Robertson, I would say that maybe Robertson and Thomas was, you know, is a more potent partnership. Quite a lot of personnel have moved on since since you were there in the summer. Yeah, that's that's the way it works, isn't it? You know, if a change of manager, then you try to bring in your own players. But there's one or two there who played in my time, and I'm sure they'll they'll do well tonight. I hope mm -hmm. they do. Ali, your thoughts, Rangers? Yeah, first. I'm surprised. Well, first of all, I, I thought uh, Thomas had played as well, but that's uh, that's the way it goes. But from a Rangers point of view, I think it, as I said earlier, big Mark been out. What we're going to have to do is, the looks of things, you'll play Duke Box, Gordon Jury through the middle, and he'll give Brian Lidrup the the free roll. He'll sort of play in front of or the midfield and, and sort of behind Gordon Jury and let him do his own thing. Hopefully we can get him the ball in dangerous areas and he can make things happen. I thought John Brown might have played. I honestly thought, to me, it looks as though we are going two centre-backs as well with Goff and uh, Big Al McLaren. And I thought he might have played Bomber as well, but it looks as though he's got Bomber on the bench and Alec Clellan will play. Let's have a look at one or two of the potential key men on this night, shall we? Uh, Jim Bett, who's been around so many clubs and distinguished himself in Scottish football and in foreign fields as well. At the age of 35 now, he still does it. Yeah, he's a very good player. Jim's more like a continental type of player. Uh, but he's a strong lad. He wins the ball and, and also plays very, very good passes. He's got a great shot, great at set pieces. And he's certainly won a big influence in the game tonight. And we believe he's decided that he will stay at Hearts until the end of the season, which presumably is a big boost. Well, that's right. I'm sure that uh, the Hearts supporters will be delighted with that. He's an international player who uh, has been very successful in his short time there. And that is a big plus for Hearts. Good player, Jazz. I mean, we played on the international level, and he's a couple of good years, well, good years at Rangers and good years at Aberdeen. Very, very good player. Good, good feet and a good pass to the ball. Now, for a man who was a free transfer from Blackburn Rovers, <coughs> he's been making up for lost time in Scottish football. John Miller of Hearts, picked up by Joe Jordan, I think, Sonny. Is that right? Yeah, free transfer. Joe Jordan signed him, and I must admit, it was one of the best signings Joe ever made for Hearts. Uh, for a long time, I wasn't sure of him, to be 100% honest. But, you know, towards the end of the second half of last season, he was first choice in my team every week. You see there, he's, he's magnificent in the air, makes great runs in the box. Uh, he's also a very creative player as well, and makes goals for other people. But his back up here is, is magnificent. It was him that made the initial pass through as well, I yeah, think. Yeah. And he sticks that away very well, that's a great goal. He's, he's very dangerous. For a midfield player, um, from an from opposition point of view, you don't want him coming out the box and shots at goal, and that's what he does. He's very, very good at it. You yeah. see him scoring a few goals here. I'm not, I'm not sure where Tommy will play him tonight, actually. If they want to go three at the back, he'll be the one that will play centre back. Five goals so far in League and Cup, but hoping to open his Scottish FA Cup account tonight. Now for a man who's perhaps the teenage sensation in Scottish football, Charlie Miller of Rangers. Um, Ali, you watch him every day at work in training. He's an amazing, amazing young man because. Um, with all due respect, you expect kids that come into the side not to maintain a great level of consistency, which is the one thing this season Charlie has done. He made his debut a couple of, about a year ago up at Aberdeen and found it difficult. But I mean, he, he links well, he, he can score goals, and he works, he works tirelessly. He's been a real find for us this year. He really has, and I'm sure without any shadow of a doubt, he'll go, he'll go on to become a great, great player for Rangers. Now, is it right that he wasn't really brought up as, a, as an orthodox front man? That no. He, he played in. Yeah, well, it, withdrawn position. he sticks us in a wheel against Hearts. We could do one of them tonight, but he, I think he prefers himself in a more withdrawn role in, in, in the, just in the, in the middle of the park. But um, he, he is a great tackle. You see him winning the ball and then a great ball for Big Mark. He sticks that away very well. 
he's a gritty wee guy, you know, with a lot of ability. But um, I, I, I wind him up a lot. I say to him, you know, you should get in the box and get the goal scoring record up. But he, he does equally well in mid midfield or up front. He also defies the myth, or helps to defy it, that Rangers only buy top quality players. But when Rangers go out and buy a top quality player, they go to the top of the market. And they've got Brian Loudrup, who is probably the hottest favourite to become a Scottish Player of the Year in oh, history. Oh, I would think so. I don't think there's, there's any doubt about that. He'll have to go, go through a serious bad patch not to be... As I said earlier, Paul, I've never, I've never seen somebody, you know, as comfy in the ball. He, in that respect, he's like David Cooper was with the ball at his feet. He just looks so comfy and he creates things. He can finish, he can score goals. But um, on a 1v1, 1v1 situation, he's unbelievable because he's a type of player, he, show, he, he shows you the ball. He shows the opposition defender the ball and you think you're going to get it and then he's just, his acceleration over four and five yards is lightning. It's How quickly did he settle in when he arrived? I mean, amazingly easy. I mean, he came over to the training camp in Choco over in Italy, up in Tuscany and in, in, in Italian. It's just fantastic. I settled in. He's a lovely boy. I think the, the, the important thing was as well, I don't really think he enjoyed the, the lifestyle over in Italy. And um, what's happened is I think when he came to the club, he, he was quite a lot, he was interested in, in, in what happened, you know, outside the stadium. What would his social life be, you know, he, I think he was saying that he hadn't been out in Italy in about two years. And I think a gaffer, he put him at right, he said some of our boys haven't been in in two years, so <laughs> you'll, you'll feel yourself quite at home, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, after McCoy's Hately and Gorham, he looks a nailed uncertain to be Scotland's Player of the Year this season. Let's hear how the fans are looking forward to this one at Tyne Castle tonight. Tenant Scottish Cup, fourth round, Hearts against Rangers. We'll hear first from the Hearts fans. Uh, it's very important for Hearts because uh, it's the last chance really to get uh, into Europe next season and also the uh, last chance of the season to get some silverware as well and uh, obviously an indication as to how far along the, the road that Tommy McLean's actually taken this side. Well, as far as the scene goes, if we get beat tonight, I think that's it all over. They've just got to avoid relegation yeah. after that. Well, it's, I think it's a very big game. You know, obviously not won the Scottish Cup since, oh, well, 56, I think. It's a big game. It's obviously very important for Hearts. It's the last chance they'll do anything this season. Cup win and a place in Europe would do us fine. Oh, it's huge. I mean, the league's finished. We're mid-table. We need to win the cup. I mean, we've not won a trophy for 35 years, which is ridiculous for a club like us. So we need to win tonight. And I think if we will, we could go all the way. Tell us your thoughts on Ryan Dustable this season. Well, I think the league's showing up, but uh, it's going to be difficult tonight. I think uh, I think we'd settle for a replay tonight, to be honest. Well, I think Rangers have a double. We've far, far the strongest pool. We've had so many injuries this year. They're still 10 points ahead of plus. And when they, when they come back, when McCoy, Stewart and all that come back, no, no, nobody's going to stop us. Guys are determined this year. They really want to do that. I think they were disappointed losing the Scottish Cup last year. Uh, a lot of people wrote them off at the start of the season after poor performance in the European Cup. But I think this year, the quality we've got, it's, it's, got, to, it's got to take us there. Well, Rangers do have all the strength and depth you could need, but it is being put to the test tonight at Tyne Castle in the Tenant Scottish Cup fourth round. We're about to get underway. There's a great hunger for success and glory at Tyne Castle, but Hearts know they've got it all to do. All the action in just a moment. Scottish Cup fourth round. Hearts against Rangers. Rangers favourites for the Cup, favourites for just about everything in Scottish football. Most years, Hearts with an awful hunger to succeed, but it is a big task for them tonight. Our guests here, Sandy Clark and Ali McCoist. Quick predictions. Sandy first. I'm going for Hearts 1-0. Right on. I think Hately being out will make a big, big difference to the Rangers and I think Hearts may just sneak it tonight. Ali? Very tough game. I'll take Rangers to win 2-1 and I'll be delighted if that's the result. I think, as I said, Hately will a blow, but we've got good players. Let's not make any mistakes about it. We've got Loudrops and Juries and Millers and guys like that. We've got guys who can score goals, so I'll go for Rangers 2-1. Thank you, Ali. And to Sandy. Uh, it's the tie of the round at Tyne Castle. Let's get to the action. Match commentary tonight coming from Terry Butcher, once of Rangers and England, and it's good evening to Jock Brown. Good evening, Paul. A marvellous atmosphere here. You can see the bedlam all around us. And, of course, the heart support is buzzing with the news that Mark Hadley, who's scored 12 goals in his last eight games against Hearts, is not playing. Now, Terry, that must make a big difference to in the dressing room. It'll make a big difference to the Hearts dressing room. Obviously, Hadley can score goals in, in big games, and uh, with him not playing, they'll see their, their chance tonight have been a really, a really a massive one, a, a real chance to put Hearts through and uh, avenge the... Uh, the two defeats in the, in, in the last two years. There's also this question of a, a flu bug, a virus in the Ibrox camp. Is there a possibility some players are slightly weakened? Well, I think it's very much a patched up side that Wallace Smith had to send out. His, his formation 
You can see the Hearts team here. They, they obviously uh, welcome back Dave McPherson uh, after five minutes where, uh, last week when he picked up stitches. They've got uh, Jim Bett, an ex-Ranger, in the centre of midfield. Uh, David Hagen, of course, used to play four Rangers, as did Colin Miller, uh, number three. So they've got a lot of players that will be keen to put one over their old team. So the Hearts team pretty close to full strength there. Neil Berry, the only real candidate for defensive position not playing. But uh, the formation could be presented a number of ways by manager Tommy McLean, who's the master of these tactics. This is one formation which could take the field for Hearts, but there are options without question. They could go to three at the back with Dave McPherson, Craig Levina, perhaps John Miller dropping back to a left centre-back marking role. Colin Miller, too, may be asked to mark Brian Logan. That will be very interesting. So the Rangers team clearly depleted by virtue of injuries and illness and no Basile Bolly but Alan McLaren back after a three-match suspension to play against his former club. Gordon Jury now carries the principal attacking threat for Rangers in place of Mark Hakeley and the likely partner for him up front may well be Brian Lowder with a very key role again for 18-year-old Charlie Miller wearing number nine. Now Rangers more likely I think Terry to play in that kind of formation. Yes, I think Walter Smith will play it very cautious tonight. Haley's not playing, so he's had to put in uh, Gordon Jury up front on his hole. Brian Lowder up on the left-hand side will start on, on, uh, on either wing and uh, have a real floating roll around. So uh, he'll play it pretty tight right from the word go. So Walter Smith, the Rangers manager, having to do a lot of thinking about his formation, the light of illness and injury. But there's Jim Bett, who has won Cup winners' medals for Rangers in 1981 and then for Aberdeen in 1986. He also tasted defeat in Rangers colours in 1982 and 1983 against Aberdeen in finals. So a key man right in the centre of midfield. Young David Hagen, 21 years old. A little bit disappointed he didn't get a long run in the Rangers first team. Now trying to revive his career following his transfer to Tynecastle. The man who caused all the worries in all opposing sides in Scotland this season is Brian Loudrop. His form has been nothing short of sensational. Not only a supplier of goals, but he's also scored nine times since joining the club from Fiorentina last summer. And Trevor Stephen also back after many injury problems affecting his season, but he will be a key man in the creative sense for Rangers tonight. The referee this evening, Mr. Willie Young from Clarkston in Glasgow, a solicitor to trade and a very calm figure to handle what could be a very tough match. So the stadium packed to capacity as Hearts prepare to start the match. And Jim Bett right in the centre of the field taking the first pass. And interesting development instantly tactically Colin Miller has gone right to the shoulder of Brian Loudrop there they are together so one tactical matter resolved early on is Dave McPherson with Jim Bett two of the four ex-Rangers players in the Hearts lineup the tackle came from Miller it was fair this is God charging from defense on the far side Trevor Stephen the support inside from Loudrop. Jury waits in the middle with Alec Cleland. John Miller's clearance goes straight to Craig Moore. A chase here for Robertson with no prospect of reaching that. Robertson being marked by his former teammate Alan McLaren, wearing number five. Golf's challenge is a strong one. Handball there by Charlie Miller, it's a free kick to Hearts he has a marvellous run in the Rangers first team this season, he's become a key player right in the centre of midfield so McPherson has the free kick well won by Moore Stephen starting the match wide on the Rangers right hand side of midfield that's awkward for McLaren and Rangers relieved to have for a corner kick well Ali Maxwell caught well out of his goal there as McLaren was caught out here yes it's really just a hopeful punt into the air and McLaren can't really let it go tries to head it back to Ali Maxwell who's come out of his goal but of a lack of communication between Ali Maxwell and Alan McLaren 
Well, Maxwell, a very confident character there, making his case to his teammates. Hagen marked by Cleland. Jim Betts takes these corner kicks from both sides. So two-footed to play this with his left foot and in swing up. Punched away by Maxwell. A shot from Hagen. And Maxwell survives. Dave McFast into the chance in the end. But what a start from Hearts, and Rangers have survived. Well, it was a good corner from Jim Bet. Swung in there viciously on the near post. Mally Maxwell just muffs his punch, really. He's in belted back in. Dave McPherson, as we see here, number six, tries to flick it over. David Robertson, then the ball just pops up into Ali Maxwell's hands. Lucky escape for Rangers. Well, that will give Hearts even further encouragement. They've played 17 matches against Rangers without a win since beating them in August 1991 by one goal to nil. A freakish goal from Scott Crabb on that occasion. So Rangers are very much the favourites before the match. A late tackle there by Goff on Mackay. Referee Young very close to the action. Larry Mackay, one of half a dozen internationals in the heart side. Yes, it was a bit of a foul there. I think it's, 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 it's good to see that Hearts have started off so positively and uh, Rangers really just uh, chasing the ball around, trying to get the tackles in. So Ali Max organising a four-man wall. Brian Loudrop has also got some defensive chores to perform. It's headed away by McCall. Every Rangers player back defending. Put in by John Miller. Headed on by Mackay, running out of space toward the byline. Well, the Hearts manager Tommy McLean promised his team would be aggressive and attack from the start, and he certainly had his men deliver. Well, what he has done, and, and really I don't know if it's down to tactics or, or down to just good play from the Hearts players, he just put balls, difficult balls, in behind the Rangers' back four just to try and test them out, try and test out any headers or anything else. He'd be quite pleased, Tommy McLean. Collins couldn't keep the ball in play. It's gone out there. So it is a throw to Hart. Stephen Frail will take it. He cost £130,000 just about a year ago from Dundee, and that proved to be money well spent for Hart. Right across there by Jury. Here's Moore. Looking up for Jury in the box. It reaches Alec Cleland. And the offside flag was up on the far side against Cleland. He started the match wide on the Rangers' left hand side. In midfield. He's a good ball actually, I think. I think really Alec Clennon should be disappointed with himself. You can see right across the line of the back four and he finds himself in offside position. Should have really just checked. Colin Miller playing it long, that's Goff. The layoff there from Dewey. Here's Trevor Stephen. Loudrop has found space over on the far side. Colin Miller is with him. So is John Miller. It's a good reaction there from Colin Miller, Canadian international player. Also had a spell with the Rangers early in his career. Craig Moore, 19 year old Australian, with the throw. Here's Trevor Stephen. Good defensive work there by Gary Mackay, totally determined. Libos pass, a good turn by Miller. Blocked by Levine. 